Okay, we're back. We're live in New York City for Hadoop World 2011. This is SiliconANGLE, SiliconANGLE.TV Productions. This is The Cube. My name is John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com. Uh, my co-host is here, and his name is? I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with a special guest, Jeff Kelly, also of Wikibon.org. Uh, Jeff is a big data analyst at, uh, for the Wikibon community. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, good to, good to see you. Hadoop World, uh, third year in a row. Your first year, my second. You know, John, you've been here since the beginning. But uh, so, Jeff, what are you? Um, what are your initial impressions of this? Uh, you know, you're you're scouring the crowd, talking to some users. What are you? What are you seeing out there? Well, there's just a ton of interest um, in Hadoop. All things Hadoop right now. I mean, it's uh, we're seeing this this evolution of Hadoop from a kind of a niche or a uh, almost a fringe approach to big data analytics and processing to really starting to gain mainstream adoption. And we're seeing more business users here, as we heard in the keynote. Uh, I think about a third of attendees here are actually kind of business users. They want to understand how Hadoop can help them in their, their everyday business. So we're definitely seeing a shift from the from the more techie crowd to, uh, to include some business users. Yeah, so I know leading up to uh, Hadoop World, you published, uh, w along with some other folks in the Wikibon community, but it was really your effort uh, the big data manifesto. Mm. So a big, big project that you undertook, really trying to describe the ecosystem, the use cases, the industries, the the market segmentation, and um, and the like. Talk about why the big data manifesto. What led to that? Uh, well, really, uh, you know, we were hearing from our community, the Wikibon community, that they needed, uh, they wanted this information. Really, um, you know, there's a lot of interest around big data right now, and our community wants to, uh, you know, needs to understand what it is. Uh, how it can impact their business. Um, there's a lot of questions around uh, you know, adoption challenges, how Hadoop can fit in your uh, existing IT infrastructure, but I think most importantly, how can it be applied uh, so that organizations can achieve competitive advantage. Um, and so that's why we put together the manifesto. So what's the big premise that you're sort of putting forth in, in that? Right, well, the premise is the big data is the new reality. I mean, the, the, the fact is that uh, you know, old ways of storing, processing, analyzing data just aren't going to cut it anymore with the variety, the volume, velocity of data that organizations are now grappling with. Uh, so organizations that uh, you know, want to maintain their competitive advantage, want to innovate, want to create new ways of doing business, um, start exploring uh, new opportunities uh, made available to them by big data, need to kind of embrace this new reality. Okay, are people really making money though? I mean, it sounds good, but uh, you know, is right. it, how real is it? Uh, it's it's real. I mean, our research indicates that there are uh, some s a good number of organizations that are that are working with Hadoop now. Um, from you know, you've got the the large uh, the web companies essentially help you know establish and develop Hadoop, Facebook, LinkedIn, Yahoo, Google, etc. And those are the well-known use cases. But we're also seeing organizations, uh, kind of online retail organizations, Orbitz, for instance, eBay. Amazon, they're big Hadoop users as well. And they're all making money, uh, optimizing their business in various ways, finding new efficiencies, developing new products. Um, there's also you know, financial firms, we heard this morning from J.P. Morgan Chase uh, in the keynote here, you know, financial firms are really starting to understand that, uh, you know, that Hadoop can help them manage risk, uh, manage their exposure. I mean, we've got the, the Greek debt crisis going on now. Um, manage their exposure to you know, Greek debt or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, also, you know, customer, pretty much across industries, this can be used to uh, understand your customer better. We heard about a 360 degree view of your customer. Um, use that information to offer better services, products, and basically provide unprecedented levels of customer service. Okay, so um, talk about big data. What's different uh, for the people in the audience that may not you know, be familiar with the, the concept? You have big data, little data. What's, uh, what's right. the difference? Well, obviously, uh, people hear big, they think volume. And that's true. Um, you know, we've gone from small data, gigabytes, you know, terabyte of data a few years ago was not that common, even in large enterprises. Now we've, we've got, you know, multiple terabytes, tens, hundreds of terabytes, even in the petabyte level, uh, even for, for non-web companies. So that's certainly uh, one factor. Uh, the variety of uh, the different types of information, uh, it's unstructured data, semi-structured data, it doesn't fit into neat rows and tables, um, you know. Small data, you know, stable data models, known uh, complex interrelationships. You know, big data. We're talking petabytes of data. We're talking unstructured data, uh, flat schemas. So it's really a whole new, uh, new sources of data. So it's it's really a new world. 
Jeff, as you're talking to uh, end users, you're talking to all the companies as well as uh, end user and practitioners out there who are kicking the tires. We heard proof of concepts are moving up to uh, other areas. Where's all this data coming from? We heard different approaches all originates with Cloudera, as that Cloudera's message says, all originates in Hadoop. We heard Informatica say something different. Where's all the data coming mm -hmm. from? Well, it's coming from a lot of different sources. I mean, I think what kind of the, what really kicked off what, what people think of as the big data era, I think was the social media, social networking data. Um, you know, you think about uh, tweets, Facebook updates, LinkedIn updates. I mean, a tweet, for instance, has multiple data points. It's not just the text, but it's the time, the user, the device. So there's multiple data points being created, uh, you know, all types of social media updates. Um, you've also got uh, mobile devices that are sending back location-based data, um, you know, from organizations are using that to, you know, optimize, give you show real-time advertising, to real-time offers, depending on where you are. Um, you've got network data. I mean, uh, Hardware, uh, IT hardware, they're sending data back to kind of the home base constantly. Um, sensors are just kind of you know becoming a part of the way we do business in terms of think about the trucking world, fleet, fleets of trucks. They're sensored. Uh, organizations can use that data to route more efficient routes, uh, gas consumption, things like that. We're here with Jeff Kelly, who's the author of the Big Data Manifesto. You can find that on wikibon.org. Um, it's a real in-depth, comprehensive document. It's obviously a wiki, so it's always editable. Again, Wikibon's uh, information and research is free. Um, Jeff deals with all the vendors and talks to end users. So go to wikibon.org and, and, um, and find the Big Data Manifesto, or just go to Google and search Big Data Manifesto, and, and you'll see the link up there. It's either the top one or the first two links on, on, uh, on Google search. Um, let's talk about um, the marketplace, right? So you have different market segments, and we're here at uh, Hadoop World 2011. A lot of vendors, uh, Aster Data. You know, you got Arista, you got Dell. So just let's handicap these guys and talk about how they shake out and what bucket do they fall in? Because and, and tell us what what are the buckets? Business intelligence, analytics. Mm -hmm. Just describe. That us gets the, confusing sometimes. Can you, you know, lay that out and just kind of like? Yeah. Well, you know, there are different. I mean, when we think about the big data, you know, the market segments. You know, they, they lay out in terms of hardware, software segments, your services segments. I mean, the hardware segments. Uh, and Mark, I think we have a slide uh, if we can put on the screen. Uh, you've got your storage, server, your, your, your networking equipment. I mean, your, your hardware that's going to power this uh, big data deployment. Which uh, Andreas Wagen says, the in infrastructure is irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might, you might hear a, a different argument from some of the, some of the players here Tell today. that to NetApp. Right. So, you know, the commodity hardware. Is the, is the foundation here. That Without that, this literally wouldn't be possible. It wouldn't be economically possible. So you've got players like Dell, HP, Cisco, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the names you've heard before in, in, the, in the hardware business. Um, then we've got the kind of the Hadoop distribution game, uh, which we can go into a little more detail a little bit later. But in terms of uh, the different options out there, you've got the open source options from, you know, the purely open source from So we're looking at the slide. This is the big data market segments that you've laid out mm -hmm. in your manifesto. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so go ahead and continue sure. so, telling them what they're um, looking at. You know, you've got you've got free open source distributions. You've got vendors like Cloudera uh, selling enterprise level distributions uh, that bundle in um, different levels of proprietary customization as well as services. Um, then you've got some non Hadoop big data approaches. Um, you've got uh, LexisNexis uh, has a company or, or spun out a company called HPCC Systems. Um, they have a competing approach, um, and then you've got kind of the the next generation data warehouse uh, vendors. Uh, Aster Data, uh, Vertica, they're, they complement kind of the uh, most Hadoop deployments. Um, and this, it's a slightly different approach, but some commonalities around massively uh, parallel processing and MapReduce uh, within the database. So handicap a little bit. I mean, who are some of the companies that you really see as uh, some, some of the favorites that people should be watching out there? Well, obviously, you know, we're here at Hadoop World. Cloudera is, uh, it, it has been on the scene the longest. You know, they've got a, a two-year head start on the market. Um, they've been around since about uh, spring of 2009, uh, so they've got you know the the most mature distribution on the market. They've been updating it you know for two years. They're on to version 3.5, I think. Um, so you know they have, as I mentioned, two different levels. They've got a, a CDH uh, Cloudera's distribution, including Apache Hadoop, that you can download for free. You can download uh, or you can purchase the uh, Enterprise Edition, which includes the their proprietary management console uh, as well as some services. Uh, so, so who else is going to make a, a boatload of dough in well, this space? <laughs> two different questions. So there's a few <laughs> different players. Who's going to make the boatload of dough? We can talk about. Um, we've also got EMC, caught in the game over the summertime, uh, the, creating their own distribution, mainly based around MapR's distribution, which is uh, includes a proprietary storage layer. Uh, so that's it's 
been painted as a largely proprietary distribution, and that's fairly accurate, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, we've got just uh, over the summer, Hortonworks uh, was spun out from Yahoo, and just I believe last week, Hortonworks released uh, or announced their first uh, distribution, 100% open source, including their custom built managed. So those three are going tools. for the big prize, right? I mean, it's you know, John, we've talked a lot about the next Red Hat. You know, we uh, Amr made some comments about the similarities and the differences. One of the similarities is Red Hat's got a $10 billion market cap, and that's what everybody wants in this space, right? Yeah, and, and it's obviously validated by one, the presence of the vendors, the market segments slide that Jeff put out obviously lays out the ecosystem and or the landscape of the industry, but really the telling sign to me on the money making and the growth side, I'd um, love to get your perspective, both you guys on this, because I know you're tracking it and doing some specific research on this, but you know, the XL Partners putting in a $100 million fund announced today at Hadoop World is compelling. Cloudera recently just announced yesterday the close of a $40 million financing, mm-hmm. more pile of money for them. So the big bag of money being brought into the sector, obviously they see returns in there. And we're going to have Frank Artali on, mm-hmm. uh, who's with Ignition Partners, oh, formerly the uh, head of BizDev at Zensource, now part of Citrix. But he dealt in the cloud business the same way. Is it the same kind of momentum? What do you guys see as the end game for the monetization and opportunity. You know, that's a really good question, John. And it's interesting. I mean, the, we're talking about the big prizes uh, that Cloudera, EMC, and Hortonworks are going after, but those are largely funded, right? I mean, mm-hmm. there may be some subsequent rounds, but these the funds that that, that Excel announced this morning are largely going to go after the rest of the ecosystem. So, where would you put it? Well, I think uh, you know, building applications on top of Hadoop is definitely the way we're going to go. Uh, we heard that in the keynote this morning and I completely agree with that. Uh, making, I think we're starting to move from the what is Hadoop phase to what can it do for me phase. Um, we're not quite there, but we're, we're moving in that direction. Uh, and key to answering that question is building applications on top of this really uh, powerful infrastructure that we call Hadoop. To actually turn that data that you've now processed, you're storing, you're managing in Hadoop, make it work for you. So I think there's definitely going to be a huge opportunity for uh, startups, other organizations, uh, to build these types of applications, to really turn Hadoop into um, kind of enabler for business analytics and ultimately achieving competitive advantage. That said, there's certainly a lot of money to be made in the distribution, the infrastructure layer itself. Um, I mean, uh, if, that, if, that's, if that doesn't work, you can build all the applications you want on top and it's not going to do you much good. So we're going to have a remote day from um, Alex Williams, um, from the author of the HBase book, is going to do a remote, the first time we've ever done that on theCUBE. Uh, we're actually going to use some of the technology we have to do that with Skype. Um, but uh, you know, my final question is, uh, what are you seeing here at the event? I mean, I see any new discoveries? I see, you know, you get your sharp eye out there. And sure. how does that tie into some of the work you're doing? Well, we're seeing, you know, I, I think some of the sponsors and vendors we see here is it's very interesting. We've, we've got Oracle here, which some people might not have might not have expected to see Oracle here. Um, I was know, a little surprised seeing them, right? I was a little bit uh, shocked too. I thought maybe somebody had misplaced okay. the banner. They got to play, sure. right? But yeah, absolutely. So, what do you think they're doing here? You think they're just doing reconnaissance? Uh, uh, well, you know, they they got into the big data game themselves, at least in, in name, at uh, Oracle Open World, which you guys covered. Uh, you know, with the cube there. So I think they're starting to feel it out. I think they're trying to understand this market. Um, and that's probably why they're here. A little bit of uh, competitive intel, that kind of thing. Just feel the pulse of, you know, the, the community here. Get a feel of, you know, our, our, the, the Hadoop community is an open source community. And, um, you know, one of the challenges for a lot of the vendors here, the proprietary, you know, the more traditional proprietary type vendors, getting into that market, getting into this market, you know, kind of cutting through the um, the, the open source community and a lot, and kind of gaining acceptance. Are they Hadoop washing? The term that John Furrier coined today. <laughs> Hadoop washing. I like that. That's, that's we're always we're inventing new terms on the cube, which is good. That's what we do. We uh, extract the signal from the noise, <laughs> and we're looking for noise. And the noise is in the form of Hadoop yeah. washing, which is essentially bolting on the word Hadoop. And it's a tricky one, unlike cloud washing, where you know we're going to look at that. So, uh, I think that's definitely happening. Uh, you know, you're. Uh, I would include uh, big data washing. Because you're seeing, you're seeing, I mean, vendor after vendor is slapping on a big data XYZ product. Um, you know, what does it really mean? There's different de- different definitions depending on what's where, what part of the market you're coming from. So, you know, that is something that you know end users and potential you know companies that are evaluating Hadoop and other big data approaches need to need to cut through that. And you know, that's what what Wikibon's trying to do. 
Okay, uh, just stay right here. We're going to go to a remote um, with Alex Williams, who's our lead blogger for Services Angle and Silicon Angle in the Enterprise, with Lars George, who's the author of the O'Reilly book, HBase book, which they're giving away, by the way, to every, all the attendees. I haven't gotten mine yet, but uh, got as yours. You, I do have as mine. You, as you know, Dave, I read it we, last night, covered it. Cover. As you know, Dave, we have an HBase um, yep. deployment. We've built our own custom HBase, so uh, I'm really excited about HBase. It's one of those hot things that uh, just so, totally works well for us on Hadoop. Is allowing us to do things we haven't done in, uh, in, in ever, and if we tried to do it years ago, it'd be very difficult with structured databases. So. Uh